If you currently own or have ever owned an early 2000s E38, then you're likely very familiar with the dreaded timing chain guide. These plastic monstrosities will disintegrate and they'll end up in your oil pan and lead to this terrible death rattle inside of your engine. And today, I'm going to expose mine. That didn't sound right. Expose my timing chain guides. We're gonna be taking the covers off. Also, I'm gonna show you why everybody strips the bolts in the throttle body and the crankcase vent valve on the intake and how you can avoid it. And if you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch the last episode. That'll kind of get you up to speed on where we are in terms of taking everything off the engine and getting down to the timing chain guides. It's here. Oh, it's here. That's not mine. This is. Now that we have all the parts for the timing chain guide job ready to go, we're ready to start removing the belts, pulleys, accessories, covers, and eventually the guides. But before we do that, let's disassemble the intake, replace all the gaskets, the crankcase vent valve, and remove all of this junk that's on the throttle body. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, people often strip out the bolts that hold everything under the intake, and that's because they look a lot like Torx and PolyDrive bolts, but they're not. As you can see, written on the outside of the bolt is R-I-B-E 8.H, which, depending on where you're from, it might be pronounced RIBE or but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna stick with Ribe. Either way, they take a special set of bits that look a lot like a Torx bit, but have a wider kind of squared off ribs with the R designation, just like you see T for Torx. On other videos, I've seen people recommending using a T25 bit to remove these, and I wanted to show you how loose they are and why they strip out so easily. So starting with that T25, you can see how much play there is between the bit and the bolt. Now, if you don't want to buy another set of bits, you can probably get away with using a T27 bit, which is the same size you need for your transmission pan bolts anyway, so it's worth picking one up if you don't have one, but it still doesn't fit very well. At least not as well as an R5, which you can see fits just perfectly. Even then, these bolts are fairly tight and still pretty easy to strip out, which I actually did to one of them, which is why I highly recommend removing the intake altogether to replace the crankcase vent valve, even if you're going to replace the bolts with a metric hex head bolt. Removing the rest of the seven ribe bolts is easy from this angle. When we get the crankcase vent valve off, we can remove the gasket and inspect to see if there's any oil in the intake. In this case, there's a light coating on just about everything on the inside, so just like many of the other things we're funding on this car, we're doing this just in time. You can use some pliers or a pick to remove that deep gasket and it pops out fairly easily. This one is clearly degraded and it's surprisingly brittle. Now I'm gonna remove the intake gaskets and inspect them to see if there's any oil going into the intakes as well. We already saw some oil on the block from in between the gaskets and so it's not surprising at all that we're finding some here. Even though it's just a very light coating, I'm really glad we're changing these out now. Now, I need to clean off some of this caked on gunk off the throttle body so I can remove it and the adapter plate on this end, which will all make this easier to clean later. There are also seven rubby bolts holding the adapter plate to the intake, all of which come out pretty easily. Two of the seven are located behind the electronic part of the throttle body, and so to get those out, you need to remove the throttle body itself by just removing those four 10 millimeter hex head bolts. Once the throttle body itself is off, those last two are easily accessible. Although for some reason I decided I needed to strip out the last one. It took a little bit of creativity with a set of vice grips to get that last one off, but eventually I got it removed and everything else came off pretty easily. Now we're also gonna replace the gasket on this end and it's pretty much the same as it is on the other one, but it is a little bit different shape. So if you do order a kit, Make sure you use the right one on this end. Now lastly, there's this internal tube and plate that run from the throttle body back to the crankcase vent valve that need to come out so there's enough room inside the intake to be able to wipe all that oil down. I have done a fair bit of cleaning on parts the last few days and the intake is clean. We have everything put on now. We have the, uh, the throttle body, the throttle body adapter plate. So uh, we have new gaskets between those guys and we have the crankcase vent valve with a new gasket on the back of it. Um, I did strip out a bolt, so I did have to go buy three new bolts 
and I had to end up getting these directly from BMW at five bucks a pop. Uh, but we only have one bolt we have to replace. Uh, we, are, we have to put back in right here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, and then we will be done with the intake. I'm gonna be careful, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on with my hands instead of the, uh, <laughs> the electric device, just to make sure I have good leverage on it, and I get it tightened up without stripping it. And there we go, we're done with the intake. Uh, now let's go get started on tearing down the front of the engine. All right, first things first is we need to take off the shroud and get the radiator out here so I have some room to work. All right. And then next, the radiator. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, there we go. here the drive belts we have uh, the main drive belt here that goes around the center crank the water pump power steering alternator and uh, we have the, uh, the tensioner right here and then over here on the other side we have a secondary belt that's just for the air conditioning it also has a tensioner on it so the first thing we need to do is use a couple of 13 millimeter bolts got to loosen one take it out so that this thing is loose and then uh, this bolt the interior one here the smaller one the 13 mil that will allow us to take the either pulley I mean the, uh, the tensioner off and then a larger 17 mil is the one that we can put uh, some pressure on to lift it up so that we can take the drive belt off. So, And this one we just have to loosen up enough. That was already pretty loose actually. Just enough to be able to pull that guy up and then we can uh, use the 17 mil. Make sure it's on loosen. Actually we want it on tighten and that'll have to push this thing up and uh, pull out the drive belt. Just like that. And of course when you do that, you gotta check this guy to see if it's got uh, any uh, cracks going on it, see if we need to replace it. Uh, looks like there's a little bit going on there. I thought it's probably on the edge. Probably could get some more mileage out of it, but might as well replace it. There's a cover over this one. I don't know if I can use the pick to get this one off or I'll have to get a screwdriver. There we go. Then once we get that off, this takes a T50 Torx fit. And I made the same mistake that everybody else makes. I forgot to leave the belt on to loosen <laughs> the nuts on the water pump first. Uh, but you know what, that doesn't really matter. We're gonna take the whole water pump off anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about removing this till later. Although that'll probably be a mistake, because then how am I gonna hold the water pump in place? <sighs> I think I'm gonna have to put the tensioner back on just so I can <laughs> loosen the bolts on this. All right, belt's back on, let's try this again. All right, that's gonna make life a lot easier. All right. All right, let's take off the other tensioner so we can get off the other belt uh, for the air conditioning. This one's uh, pretty much the same as the other one. It's just configured a little bit differently. And then same thing, there is a cover. It might be a little hard to see. It's blocked by this hose, but that cover comes off and then there's a um, T50 Torx bit in there as well. Uh, that one also looks pretty good. I think this is a newer one, um, so that one still looks pretty good. We might keep that one. Uh, we'll see what sort of deals I can get on the whole kit. So I forgot this one was held on by a bolt right here, which is also a 13 mil bolt. So there's two 13 mil bolts and 11 mil. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing is, uh, you see the this is the power steering uh, pump right there, and you can see how just terribly caked on everything is down in there. And since I'm taking the power steering system apart, I might go ahead and just pull that pump off completely just so I can give it a clean up, uh, maybe give it a once over to make sure it's in really good shape. This is what we're coming up to soon here, <laughs> is the, uh, the infamous Jesus bolt. Uh, I have a plan for this one, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I don't know if I have the room yet. So we're gonna uh, probably end up taking off all the bolts for this and seeing if I can get a tool to fit in there by taking the harmonic balancer off. Um, but I'm not quite sure yet. We'll have to think about that. All right, for the sake of time, I'm not going to show me taking off everything off the front of the engine. Uh, we have the water pump to take off, the EGR pipe here. We have the EGR valve, a couple of other pipes. We're going to take the alternator out. There's plenty of videos on how to take that out. And um, we don't have to touch the AC, so we're fine there. But we just got a couple of pipes on the front, a couple of sensors, uh, camshaft position sensors, so we can get down to the solenoids, a couple of pipes that are just sitting in here. And we're basically going to get everything ready to clean off the front of this engine. 
uh, and then we'll be about ready to take off the harmonic balancer and start attacking the Jesus bolt. But I think after we clean off the front, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do the valve covers on both sides, coil packs and spark plugs and everything out of those first. So uh, hopefully I can just snap my fingers and this will be done. Now we have most of the accessories, pulleys and belts removed, including the water pump, a harmonic balancer, tensioners, and we've even removed the alternator and the hoses that feed the coolant into that water-cooled housing, which is, is really cool. This is actually a water-cooled alternator, although that's also a bit of a pain too. But the good thing is, is it all came off pretty quickly and pretty easily. Now, just so you know, the plan is to kind of show a lot of this stuff going back on for this part, which is part of the, the overall strategy for the videos on this build. I might skip over different parts of removal with the intent of showing it going back on or vice versa. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and start getting ready to pull off all the covers on the top in the front of the engine, starting with the valve covers. But before we can do that, we need to remove things like the engine bay battery terminal, the coil packs, coil grounding cable, spark plugs, and then finally the valve covers themselves. And now I'll likely just do one side on camera and then we'll do a, a copy paste, control C, control V uh, to the passenger side. I'm just gonna tuck that out of the way instead of taking it off. Hopefully this comes off relatively easy. Get a little bit of leverage. There we go. All in all, it doesn't look too bad. I can see through it. It looks a little dark on screen, so we'll have to see. All right, now that we have the oil drained, that's gonna make this a lot easier. Or at least I have to worry about it dripping a little bit less anyway. Not that it's gonna drip from all the way up here, but. Now these three bolts up here are a little bit different than the other, what is that, eight? So we're gonna make sure and keep those separate. They were supposed to replace these rubber grommets when they did this. It doesn't look to me like they were replaced. Ooh, that was a little hard to fit in there. That one tight, tight. Now we wanna be pretty careful pulling this off. Um, it's got an aluminum head and the magnesium uh, valve covers. So I don't necessarily want to be like jamming in here to get this thing off, but I need to break this loose just a little bit somehow. So and I'm not worried about, I've already got new valve covers or new gaskets. So I'm not worried about that. That one came off pretty easy. Just loosen it a little bit. There it goes. There's the half moon seals in the back. Oh boy, the RTV, that sucker on there. That's good. That means it did a pretty good job. <laughs> it just doesn't want to come off. Oh man. You know, all in all, it actually looks pretty good. There's, you know, the tiniest bit of varnish on the inside of them, but man, I've seen some that were much, much worse than this, but there's zero sludge in there, which is really great. I was, uh, you know, maybe minorly worried. And of course we have the oiling rails. We'll need to take those off in a little bit. And they all look like they're tightened down pretty good. I don't see anything that's loose. Actually, it looks to me like even though this is a new gasket and just looking at it, it looks like this is new. So this was definitely replaced with new and they did a good job. I was afraid that they, you know, they did put RTV all the way around it which means it's probably gonna be a little bit of the pain in the neck to clean out the, the inside of the groove on the, the valve cover. But you know, you're not supposed to do that. And I can actually see oil on the inside of there. And I can see a little bit of oil on the um, bottom side of the head right here. So I think that this was leaking again on the bottom of it, which is a little bit frustrating. There's no doubt about that. And I have to wonder whether or not it was because of the RTV because it looks like like it's up it's up on the top of the RTV and it's on both sides of it so it was clearly leaking past that somehow so we'll just definitely have to be a super extra careful make sure we get that the, those surfaces really clean before we put anything back over them and then maybe uh, be a little more cognizant about how much we tighten down those lower ones and on the other side copy paste and we're done so here it is we have the uh, second side done the only thing that I found when I finally got this thing off of here that uh, I'm concerned about <laughs> is that we're missing uh, one of the studs and bolts on the oiling rail. Um, 
I mean, it's conceivable that it worked its way out of there, but that valve cover comes down so close to the top of these things, I don't see how it possibly could have worked it out. The only thing I can think of, hopefully, is that uh, it's just, it's missing. And someone pulled it out when they did some work on it at some point and uh, didn't put it back, which seems absurd to me. So uh, I'm gonna have to see it, have to locate a stud and new nut for the uh, the oiling room. <laughs> you know what I forgot, uh, that I completely forgot was the case, is that um, the reason that the, <laughs> the valve covers are so close to these is because they actually are the same bolt. Uh, so the bolt that um, screws down to the top of these are the same ones that hold the valve cover down. So I did find this one, which is uh, very clearly that stud that's in there. And I had forgot that that's the case, that, uh, that any of these guys could come out when you take the bolts out. So um, thank goodness it is not in the engine anywhere. I don't have to worry about that. It's just, uh, I have to make sure and put the stud back in and tighten it down a little bit before we end up uh, putting the valve covers back on. So, uh, <laughs> thank goodness. All right, we got the spark plugs out on the other side and there is just a bunch of oil that are actually in the spark plugs. So uh, while these are kind of soaking in and trying to get some of that oil out, because I got to get all the spark plugs out before I can start turning the crank over uh, just because of compression. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and show you guys some of the things that uh, came out in this last little go around. So here are the eight coil packs that we came out and they're actually in the same order that they were in the car in terms of uh, driver side, passenger side. And uh, all in all, they're not in bad shape. Um, you can tell that they're, they're original, they're all the same, which is really good. Uh, there's a fair bit of oil that's kind of on them that had been caked on from, oh, just, just the, the valve covers leaving and oil getting down, or leaking and oil getting down into the spark plugs. Uh, speaking of the spark, spark plugs, these are the four that are from the other side. And uh, look at them, they're actually not for 100,000 miles. I'm pretty positive these are the original ones. It'd have to be just about, I would be shocked if they weren't. And they definitely needed to be replaced, but um, I've seen worse come out of engines with many less miles on my actually my Land Rover looks like this after about a thousand miles. Here's all the valve cover uh, bolts that came out and of course the one that we we're talking about a little bit earlier this is the one that actually goes into the, uh, the fueling rail. There was a, an extra washer in here and actually a few of these had an extra washer on them as well. I think what they were doing was on some of the lower ones they would put an extra thick washer on there to help give a little bit extra clamping force, which might be one of the reasons that that one stuck on there. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, these are all going to get completely cleaned up. These are going to get cleaned up before we even put them back in. So all in all, about what you'd expect. I think all things considered, some things worse, some things better. Uh, now we just need to go ahead and get those spark plugs out so that I can go ahead and get the harmonic balancer on. Uh, we can get this thing cranked over and set uh, and in time so that uh, I can start pulling off all these front covers. So I'm pretty excited. We're getting closer. So I think the next thing we need to do is need to take off these oiling rails on both top and bottom on both sides so that we can get the, the blocks in place. It looks like this one's gonna have to turn just a little bit. It does look like it's a little bit out of time. And if I turn that over, um, it should get this back uh, with tension like it's supposed to have on it. So um, let's go ahead and get the oiling rails off and we'll be good to go. last one by hand because there's not much room there <laughs> oh come on don't don't be dropping bolts buddy before we start removing the covers and the vanos and the timing chain guides and stuff like that i decided it was time to go ahead and turn the crank to top dead center and break out the german auto solutions aluminum camshaft holding tools and put them in place to make sure that the engine is timed correctly uh, this is a perfect opportunity to do that and they're labeled with exhaust a and intake e right on the tools and you can look at the top end of the camshafts and they're also labeled A and E, and so you know exactly which tool goes with which camshaft. So the only thing that's helpful is there's this little knockout right here. It's a bit of a T-shape, and uh, while it's on there correctly, the uh, the post will, will poke up through that, but when it falls into that, that little central notch right there is when you know that it's dead nuts on. So that's what that one just did is it's flush to both sides of the, of the, uh, the head. It's touching both sides and it's in that notch right now. So that should be set just right. And I'm willing to bet that when I put the, the exhaust side on, it's not gonna be even close. Yeah, it's not even close enough to even <laughs> move it. So, and turn it until it's about in the right spot. Should be pretty close. And there it goes. A little bit more. Now it's dead nuts on. And then I can go ahead and uh, I'm gonna double check the instructions just to make sure I'm tightening these down correctly. But now I can go ahead and uh, put the bolts on and tighten those guys down. 
And the good thing is, is this this, this thing, uh, the chain is tensioned just right again. And I'll be curious now. Dad, that should line up just right. Oh, this, this works really well. Now, for something I have been dreading. We've got to get to work on the Jesus bolt so we can get these covers off. Come to Papa. All I can say is thank goodness I didn't have as much trouble with this as <laughs> the car ninja did. Oh, thank goodness. So we just took out the tensioner, and one thing to note, just in case my footage didn't come out, I've had some other footage go bad, of course, with the, <laughs> the Jesus bolt. Uh, but I did put the, the gas tools to lock the cams on already to, be able to make sure these things are all locked in place before I put the tensioner out. Because uh, I wanted to make sure that these things were locked down and in pretty good spots before I start taking these upper covers off. So uh, now that I got the tensioner out, I just have to take off the solenoids, and then the, uh, the cover should come right off. Now I don't currently have the tool that allows you to take the solenoids out. I think it's a 32 mil um, extra long, extra deep socket that can fit over the solenoids to, to pull these things out of here, but I don't have those. So I'm hoping that just pulling these things off, I'll be able to carefully kind of pull this away and get it around that. And then I can get a wrench on it and take it off. Before I go ahead and take off, start taking off the covers, I did want to talk really quickly about how you can tell that this is in time when you're rotating the crankshaft around and you're trying to get it to top dead center and to make sure that these things are in the right place before you start locking it down with the tools. A couple of them you've already seen before, of course, there is a mark on the case that the harmonic balancer actually has a little mark on it as well. When it lines up with this, you're gonna be pretty close. You're not gonna be right on. And then uh, once you get that right about where you want it to be, you can go on the back uh, at the transmission. There's a pin that you put in the back and there's a hole in the flywheel that it goes in through. Once you have those two things in place and you actually have the valve cover off, uh, one quick way to be able to tell, there are just two different ways that I would recommend. One is that these lobes on the camshafts are pointed to the inside. They're kind of pointed at these bolts uh, that are holding the, the brackets on the camshaft that are holding it down. And if you have those lobes pointing at one another, those corners, it's a pretty good indicator that you're really close. The problem is it could still be out of time. And the one easy way to tell uh, if, if you've got the covers off is that on this a little timing plate right here that goes on the Vanos. Uh, there's actually a hole in that plate. You can pull these guys off right here. These are T25. And if you pull these off and then take a number five Allen wrench and put it through that hole, it'll go through the hole in that timing plate. If you pull this off and you see the hole over here on the opposite side, you know this is on the intake stroke. It's, it's on the wrong. You need to rotate it again uh, around one full time because the lobes will still be in the right location. That's just that that hole will not be in the right location. And you can tell that on either side. And that's actually another good way, good way to do a final check after you get these back on and after you've already timed it and everything to do a double check is to pull those pins out or to pull these, uh, these bolts out, put your number five Allen wrench through there and make sure that that, uh, that timing plate is in the right location. So um, I don't see this one talked about very often, but it's actually really super handy. And so I'll, I'll take a picture of that while it's off and make sure include it in here so you know what it looks like. All right, now let's get to these guys. One, two, there's another right here that's hiding a little bit. All right, and what I want to do is I actually want to leave these bolts in their proper holes. I don't want to take them out just yet, just, and then uh, I'll make sure I mark them in the right location, uh, just to make sure they go back in the exact right location. I just want to be careful, that's all. Yeah, I think this thing actually had a pretty good leak down here, just based on what I see down there. And I pull that bolt out and there's uh, oil coming out of it, so. 
This should come off pretty easily, I think. Yep, no problem. And I just dropped all the bolts. Now this one is definitely gonna be a problem. I can't have both this in and that in and pull this off. What I'm probably gonna have to do is go ahead and take off that lower oil pan so that I could get this guy out. Looks like it's time to go ahead and take off the lower pan. All right, that should have been the last one. Right? Right. It shouldn't be this hard to take off. Well, I suppose that's a good sign to some degree. That's a little bit of a surprise. There we go. I just got oil. Oh, my mouth. That's disgusting. Oh, my God. And it gave me a fat lip. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that was an adventure. Um, I ended up cutting my lip open here. I'm not gonna show you all the carnage. <laughs> yeah, and it took me a while to clean up that mess, but eventually I got the mess cleaned up and uh, everything is good to go. So we got the uh, dipstick tube out and so now we're ready to take care of these guys. All right, we have the two upper ones off. We do have the, or the lower oil pan off that gashed me <laughs> in the face. It's not too bad, uh, but we have that open and I could see all the bolts under there that I need to be able to take this guy off. And now with the two upper covers off, this came off really easy without uh, these getting in the way. So I know a lot of people say that you need to have the tool to get these off, but it wasn't that difficult. And I'm not even 100% sure I need to take them off. I probably will and clean them up because I think behind these is where the valves are at that I need to replace anyway. So let's go ahead and get underneath and get the four bolts out here and then we'll pull this bad boy off. Three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think there's thirteen on this side, so I'm missing two. Oh, there's one right there. And there's another one right here, I betcha. Which I believe is all of them. <laughs> All right, uh, come to find out there's actually 15. I could have swore there was 13, but there was a couple that were hiding uh, on either side back in here. So there were actually more than I thought. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 bolts on the face. I could have swore there was 13, but um, there's 15 and then six down below on the, so there's 21 total bolts. It looks like they're holding this in so far, unless I find another one, but hopefully this starts coming off now. Sounds like it doesn't want to move, like there's another bolt down here for some reason. So I'm gonna double check and see. Uh, this is the lower front cover with the crankshaft seal, so this is where it comes through. Uh, this is where the alternator goes. And as I was pulling this off, um, I had forgot about a couple of things that were on the back of it. The first thing was this is the um, power steering pump that goes on, and because it's so dirty on top, I can tell that this is the right way up. This bolt right here, goes through uh, this lower part of the cover on this side. So it's underneath the alternator and it goes through right there. And if you forget about that one, uh, this whole thing isn't going to come out. You actually have to take off. I forgot you actually have to remove the power steering pump. It only takes two bolts and then that's loose um, apart with disconnecting everything else and draining it. But then uh, this bolt right here is what holds it on to the back of the, the alternator cover. So. Uh, it's actually quite easy to remove. I'm glad I actually remo removed it all together. And then there is a line that connects right here as well that you have to remove. That's pretty easy. It's just got a little clip on it. You pull it out and then it slides right off. Uh, so that works pretty well. Uh, otherwise, uh, we have everything else taken apart here. We have, you can see how dirty all the stuff is. Uh, we're gonna break out the sandblaster this weekend and sandblast these guys. I'll clean these. I don't know if I'm gonna sandblast them or not. I don't know if I need to. Um, and I'm actually considering painting these. I haven't decided yet. If I wanted to paint those with like a gray or something like that, we'll have to see, but. 
All right, I am sorry. I did <laughs> jump ahead a little bit. Uh, I got into a groove late at night and ended up removing the vanos and the guides and the chains and, well, just about everything else that needed to come off. And uh, the reality is I needed to get the vanos sent off as quickly as I could because it's going to take about a week to be built by a gentleman by the name of Chris Wise. And so uh, it did need to go out. Now, I'll still show all of the stuff going back on, but I did want to show how clean the engine ended up being on the inside once I get everything off. I've not done anything to it, and it looks exactly like it did when I opened it up. The guides were in the same shape as everything else thus far. They were very tired, showing signs of significant wear, but they were still intact. Uh, we got to it just in time. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and throw up a picture right now uh, comparing the old guides with the new ones. You can kind of see the grooves that were worn into it and these kind of odd little pock marks. I don't know where they came from, but there's not any plastic in the oil pan, so we're good there. I did end up measuring the slack on the oil pump chain and it was still within that 10 millimeter plus or minus two millimeter spec. And so there's no need for any adjustments at this point. The good thing is I have already changed out pretty much everything in the power steering system, except for one line, uh, because I need to raise the engine up off the steering rack to get to it. And in the meantime, I went ahead and ordered new engine and transmission mounts because uh, while I'm in there, I might as well go ahead and do that as well. So while I've shipped the Vanos off and the covers are in the process of being cleaned, I am going to do our very first maintenance item, the non-return valves behind the solenoids. You just need to remove the solenoid, which I've already done, and then you can get a long M10 bolt with a 0.125 thread pitch, and it will thread right into the valve, and you can easily pull it out with just a little bit of a light yank. If it's difficult to get out, there might be some other issues because it should come out pretty easily. Now once you have the old one out, you just take it off the bolt thread on the new one and lightly oil it up before replacing it back into the block. Now I very lightly use a dead blow hammer and I just tap it back into place until it seats. We'll rinse and repeat on the other side and now we have two new non-return valves. All right, now that I have everything off the front of the engine, to start putting this thing back together again, I've, uh, I am super excited. Uh, the Vanos should be back in a couple of days, which means I think we're ready to start putting these things on again. All right. 